Hello world, welcome to the 214th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing, liking this video, and leave a comment and tell me what your favorite MMORPG is. If you're new to my channel, let me explain what I'm doing. And so part of my uh, Jarvis plan is to have a bunch of Python codes that run autonomously at night gather data and then when I wake up in the morning I'll have a visualization ready for me and so I've already created a uh, dividend tracker app that tracks all my dividends and now it's slowly building my net worth and if you want to watch that video you can start by watching the first video here but I also play an MMORPG a massive multiplayer online role-playing game called Albion Online and like all MMORPGs, it has a massive economy on the inside. And I'm what's called an econ player or an economic player. And so I'm very interested in buy and sell orders and just the general price of things in hopes to sell and make in-game currency. So I've already showed how to get a, the price of a single item from albiononlinedata.com a single item from a single location and then just print it right here in the console. But today we're going to do um, get multiple items from multiple locations, the sell prices of those, and then display it so you can do, use a drop down and check all the prices. Now I'll be honest, using the Python request module from Albion Online Data is tricky sometimes. So sometimes it has a zero, but that's okay. I just uh, run it several times and I eventually get the price. And so just up front, I will say that this is a more intermediate level Python code that I'll show you. I'm not a tutorial channel, so I'm not going to go into what everything does. I'm just going to run through the code. And so I did have to use ChatGPT to help me, I'll be honest. And so let's take a look at what it looks like right now. So we're going to run this code and it's going to open up a Plotly dash page like this. And what we have is this uh, T5 planks. So T5 planks, if you know what that is, tier five. And so right here, this is just a testing that I've done. This is a uh, Limhurst price. I just want to make sure that it's working. But anyways, we have Limhurst, Bridgewatch, Thetford, and Fort Sterling. And the prices automatically show up. So I have T5 planks in the default, and I'll show you what that means. Then we have T4 uh, turnip salad or meal salad. So like I said, for some reason it didn't track the uh, Limhurst price when it pulls, but it did for Bridgewatch and Thetford, but not Fort Sterling. And so I found that I have to run the code uh, several times. I think it's a user contributed code. So if nobody has entered the Limhurst price in a while, it just skips it. Unlike games like EVE Online, which publishes the whole API, the game does. So you can have real time data. And then so turn up. So, whoa, a lot of missing here. And wheat. And these are the sell prices. And so um, I do make turn up salads. And it's been on a downward spiral for quite a long time. So I think Limhurst is the cheapest for um, turnip salad. So I, I believe it's in the 1700s right now. And maybe less than a month ago, I was selling it for close to 2300 or 2200 I do have a bunch of buy orders, and I'm buying it at like 999 silver, which is kind of nice. And then I'll just, I could just collect a bunch of it and sell it to Bridgewatch or Thetford. And make a bunch of money so that's the goal so that's what I'm using the code for so every morning I can check it so like I said we're gonna about to go into some more intermediate code so let's check it out okay so we're going to import dash and then from dash we're going to well you'll need to pip install dash so if you don't know how to do that file well then this is probably too advanced for you but file settings go to your project Python interpreter Go here. I don't know if it's dash or plotly. Dash. Here we go. So install dash. So from dash, import HTML, DCC, input and output. Notice that the I and O have capital letters. 
If you use ChatGPT with Platly Dosh, remember the free ChatGPT uh, stopped absorbing language in 2021. And so since then, Plotly Dash has changed its library significantly. So um, if this you're watching this in 2023 around there, just know that this is the current way to do it. And then we're going to import requests. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish this URL. This is the URL that requests use right here to get the prices. This is just the beginning of the URL. It won't pull up anything if you just type this in. Um, this is legacy from when we were just doing one location. So now we're going to look at all the locations. So let's create a list, Limhurst, Bridgewatch, Thetford, and Fort Sterling. The quality right here, you can use zero for uh, basic. Uh, you can enter a one, two, or three, or even four now for each quality. So tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. I'm just using blank. I just sell blank stuff. I, when I do the economics behind it, it, it I don't see the uh, huge advantage of doing crafting on enchanted items unless you're selling it to a black market, which I don't. And then the items of interest is a list. So T5 planks, these have to be exact. And here is the website to get the name. So let's check that out. So you have the items in a JSON format if you want to download all the JSONs or in the text. And here is the text. So let's just uh, cedar planks. And you can see that it is T5 planks here. So it's called T5 planks. It has to be capitalized, has to have the underscore, right? Typical programming coding uh, knowledge. Then we're going to have this empty data list right here. This is where we're going to put all the items. Right, so just data. And uh, I don't know if this is right. I'm not an expert. I'm a self-taught coder, but I think these are all constants, right? These are not going to change, so I put them in capitals, but don't know if that's right or, right or not. So for each location in locations, so it's going to start off in Limhurst, I believe. So for each Limhurst, it's going to go through each item. So it's going to go T5 planks in Limhurst, run the code. Then it's going to go T4 meal salad in Limhurst, run the code, T3 wheat, and so on and so forth. Then it's going to restart into bridge watch with planks and so on. So that's what this is for location in locations. And then for item in items of interest, we're going to do a request. So request.get this basic price URL, which is that URL we just talked about. Then you're going to add the item name plus this, this is part of the total code, plus the location, plus the qualities, right? This is part of the code. And then the quality, you pass it, uh, whatever you're trying to do, we did zero. Then it's going to create a JSON. And in that JSON, we're gonna get the sell price. So price equals request.json. We just want the zero with index, which happens to be the sell price minimum. Then we're going to append that, right, data.append, the location, which is Limhurst, the item name, which is item, and the price, which is price. So let's um, print that real quick. So print uh, data. Okay, let's run this code again. And let's look at what that looks like. Okay. So I just quit the, the dash uh, part of it. So what it has is location, Limhurst, item name, planks, price, then it has the price. Then like we talked about, now it moves to the next one with location, Limhurst, item name, salad, price was zero in this case, Limhurst, wheat, price, and like I said, now it's gonna start in bridge watch, going back to planks, going back to meal salad, and then so on and so forth. So that's how we start our data. Now, what we wanna do is we're going to set, right, unique items, we're going to set it as the item name for item in data, right? So what I want is a set of organized items. So for the T4 meal or T5 meal salad, I want it to arrange it where it only mentions T5 salad once and then it has the location and price. 
So that's with this set by item name for item in data. And so now, now that we have this, this is called dynamic code. Now all we have to do is add more things that we're interested in here. And we don't have to change any more of the data and it will automatically increase the list of items. Right? And then now when the item options, it's going to have the label of item, the value is item, and then for item in unique items, right? So now when I have the drop down list, it's only going to show me the four or five items I have in my items of interest. So if you don't understand that, that's probably a more intermediate concept of setting your lists, but um, that's what it is. And now just for a normal dash code is app equals dash dot dash underscore underscore name underscore underscore. So the first part of it is going to be the drop down, right? So the app dot layout equals HTML dot div. Then we're going to create our DCC dot drop down. We're just going to call it drop down menu. The options is the item options, which is now right here, right? This is our unique items that we have established in order. My default value is just going to be T5 planks. The style and width is 50%. So this little icon is going to be 50% of the screen. And no item name is big enough to cover that. So if you forget this width, it'll just go towards the total end, you know, the drop down box. It'll be the total width of your screen. If you do it less than 50%, just know that a big item name might mess it up. I try to do it dynamically where the box changes by the name of it and I didn't like how that looked because um, every time I clicked on it, especially if I was clicking between wheat soup and wheat real quick, the box would keep changing and it was messing it up. I didn't like it. Um, then we're going to give it a dot div of output container. Then below that, we're going to do HTML dot div. And now this is going to tell it that we're going to do a list, this H3 is going to be the location. The style of gray is going is going to be gray color and then for location in locations, right? And so this is just displaying the four cities. And what I like I like to do it like this, so display equals flex and it's justified and there's spaces between it. And so now let's say I put a huge name, like let's say we had a name of like um Water World 7 Alabaster or something. That was one name of a city, right? If you um, if you don't put this in order like a justify, then you have to manage the spaces, and I don't like to do that. So I just do justify content and then space between. And then below that, we're going to do the prices. So html.h2, so it's slightly bigger font. The ID is going to be Limhurst price. And by not putting a color, it's going to default to black. And I really like that. Same thing here. I want it to flex, justify contact with space between. That way when it shows, it's going to be aligned underneath the city. Right? And then if you're new to Plotly Dash, just be careful of these right here. Uh, the square brackets, it's just like CSS, HTML, where one wrong bracket will have you messed up for quite a while. So now the app.callback, so the output container, the children, right? So that's going to be the output. Plus, this is us handling all the different item names and the um, location names right here. So I'm not going to, I'm not a tutorial. If you don't know what this is, we're replacing a dot for Fort Sterling with this. With no dot, we're replacing the underscore or any space with an underscore to get the price. And so, for example, limhurst.price, right? And so it is now lowercase. It, Fort Sterling doesn't have a dot. It has a space. See, and now it has an underscore. So that way we don't have to get everything exact, right? We could put the actual name of the cities. Let's say I wanted to do a bunch of other black zone cities or hideouts or whatever I don't have to worry about what it's called anymore so that's what that chunk of code does and then the input is going to be the drop down menu right and it's just going to take the value so if I use the drop down menu to tick t5 planks it's going to pass that value to here and it's going to update the output containers 
And when it does that, it's going to update the prices based off of whatever's in the selected item, which is right here. And then we have this price outputs here, this empty list. And then the selected item data is going to be for item in our data if the item name equals selected item. So it's going to look inside of our list of item names and find it. And if that selected item data is found, right, then the price outputs dot append the price, right? So this is just the price. Remember, we created this list right here, um, price right here price so that's all it's doing is retrieving the price there for location and locations the location data is going to be the next location and if that location data exists so basically let's say in my drop down menu I had an item that's not in here or a location that's not in here then this is going to find it and it's just going to say price and a but if that item exists, which is what we found here, and if the location exists, we're going to append that price to here. All right? And then we're going to return the price outputs. And once we have the price outputs, then this app callback will know what to do, right? It's going to know to change the prices. And then we're going to run the app. So if name equals main, run server I have the debug down here All right so now that we went through the code let's just give it a quick check see if we got some new prices run the local server oh sweet so for t5 planks we have all the prices which I think that was true last time as you can see Limhurst as always is the lowest so if you're selling in Limhurst and making things in Limhurst just know you're getting the lowest profit from it um, as you can see, the, the location and the price are semi-aligned. Now, if you have OCD, just know that this is justifying them separately. This price doesn't know where this is. So Limhurst is left-aligned in this case. Bridgewatch is center-aligned. Thetford is right-aligned. And Fort Sterling is right-aligned. So it's up to you on style. If you want to change the styles, that is here. This display, flex, justify content, and space between. Right? This is the drop down menu. Right? See, this is 50% on my screen. If you don't put that 50%, like we discussed, this box will be all the way over here. So notice that this is not 50%, right? This is right here. And this is to accommodate some huge long price. So, but I like it a lot. I like how this doesn't change. And I like how this is steady like that. This is the gray that I was telling you about. This is in H3 right now. And this is H2. So slightly larger font and it's black. I, don't know, I just think it looks really clean. And so right now, it is running the request every time we run this. That's not ideal for me. However, Albion, Albion Online, like any MMORPG, is live. It's real time. Where my dividend tracker... I don't need real-time data, right? I just need the night before. So we'll have to dis decide what we'll do with Albion online data to see how we want to... Um, I play early in the morning to do all my crafting and stuff, so I might just have it run maybe 10 minutes before I wake up. That way it's 10 minutes old versus kind of live-ish here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please consider subscribing if you want to continue watching me build Albion Online data visualizations or my overall idea of having a real-life Jarvis named Shane. And like this video and leave a comment and tell me what you're, what you're manufacturing and crafting in, Eva, in um, Albion Online or what your favorite MMORPG is. I love to connect with other people who, you, who are econ players who have Excel sheets and stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.